coming up on this episode of Up for Debate, we're on our third season, if you can believe it, third season of the year. That's right, we're talking summer, all the best things about summer, coming up now on a brand new Up for Debate. This is Up for Debate, episode number 81, recorded June 8th, 2017, Everything Under the Sun. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this episode of Up for Debate, the show that will talk about any topic. And we're going to prove that tonight when we talk about summer here on a brand new episode. I'm joined, as always, by uh, the co-host with the most, uh, Mr. Matt. I'm hey there, Mr. Matt. Sean. Yes. How, uh, how hot is it in your neck of the woods? Actually, it's annoyingly not hot. So for those who <laughs> don't know, I used to live in Houston, Texas, which is like one of the hottest places it's hot, like all the time. And now, when you say you used to live there, yes. did you like grow up in Houston, Texas, or uh, good, good question, man? <laughs> I appreciate you... you asking. Uh, no, I did not grow you lived up there for a month. I grew up in the north, up north, and I moved to Houston, and that was a great decision because Houston is beautiful, and the weather, despite being hot, is desirable. Um, and then I moved back north, and it is June. And I've been wearing sweatshirts and jeans. So this sucks. And where did the sun go, Matt? Where did the I miss the sun? I don't know. I'll tell I you where the, the sun, sun the sun definitely is. Down here in in sunny Virginia. Mm. It's been pretty hot. I mean, I, I can't remember yesterday was a little cool and this morning was a little cool, but it definitely got back up there. I think it hit seventy eight down here. So we're God we're enjoying damn. our summer. That's so here nice. In, the problem yeah. is when it's nice here, it's like the nicest. It just that happens like four days a year. Yeah. And then it's just really crappy the rest of it. Damn it. That's a shame. It is a shame, Matt. Um, but we're not going to focus on the negatives. We're only going to focus sunny side up, as they say. Uh, nobody says that. We're going to focus on the positives. Before we get to that, uh, I got to do a few things on the offset. I want to remind everybody we're live right now on Facebook at facebook.com slash up for debate show. Uh, we do it Thursdays. <laughs> sometime in the evening who knows uh but if you follow the page or follow us on twitter at up for debate tv we'll let you know when we go live um and if you're watching live you can comment on facebook we'll be watching all show long or call into our phone number at 508-644-8324 numbers there on the screen for you um I also want to remind everyone, our website, upfordebate.tv, is available for your enjoyment. Now, Matt, uh, you may remember, as I mentioned in the offset, summer is the third season we've done it on is. the show. Um, and I wanted to write this down for folks who didn't catch the old episodes but want to hear them, right? We talked about fall on episode 29, episode number 29, back on October 29th, 2015. And we, yes. we talked about spring back on episode number 51, Back on May 12th, 2016, last year. Um, and here we are talking about summer. And we did, by the way, do one of my, what what to date, I will say, is one of the weirder episodes we've ever done, which is the Red, White, and Blue episode, which was in some ways a little bit of a summer episode. That was our 4th of July episode, um, which is was so bizarre. <laughs> um and I I still don't understand why we did. That's another fun one if you hadn't. Heard hey, it. I think that was pretty good. That was that's worth a listen. Oh, for, uh, oh, totally. No, it was great. But that were red, white. When you pitched that, I'm like, what the hell is he talking about? Things that hey. like red lop. We talked about red lobster. And yeah, uh, red lobster and blueberries. Are blueberries really blue or are they purple? That's right. We did have that debate. But we're not here to rehash that, Matt. We're here to talk about summer. Where would you like to start? Is there somewhere you'd like to start with summer? All right, here's where I'm going to start off with summer. I want to do a plug right now for you're a company allowed. that I really, really enjoy. Who said you're allowed uh, to plug things? It's called Chick-fil-A. Oh, stop. Uh, now, I had Chick-fil-A for dinner tonight. And this, just bear with me, this is going to tie into summer. For those of you who haven't experienced it yet, I, I highly recommend you go out to your local Chick-fil-A and you go buy yourself the brand new summer barbecue Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich. Uh, here for a limited time only. It is fantastic. Might be one of the best things I have ever consumed. So you want to go out and do that right now. By yourself, uh, it, it's it really you'll you'll thank me. It's it's great, great. Promotional consideration not furnished by Chick Fil A. 
Um, is it? Uh, how is it? What kind of barbecue sauce is it that they put on there? Well, it's it's their traditional Chick Fil A barbecue sauce, um, kind of smothered in um, a grilled chicken Chick Fil A sandwich. It's not your your traditional fried crispy variety sandwich. It's the grilled, which I think is is better on well, occasion. You wouldn't, you wouldn't want to put barbecue sauce on the fried one anyway. No, no. This is this is the, the their you know grilled sandwich. Hmm. Uh, pepper jack and cheddar, I believe, are the two cheeses that are married in this sandwich, a marriage made in heaven. Um, and, of course, you got your smoked bacon right on top. It is unreal, an unreal combination. But is it like a, is it like a sweet barbecue sauce? Is it like a smoky barbecue sauce? It's, it's definitely... No, no, that it's definitely more on the on the smoky and sweet side. I would say m- much more on the sweet side, for sure. It's like your very run of the mill barbecue sauce, very sugary and, and great. So definitely go get yourself one of those. A, it's a great way to get the summer started. Get you know, get the season off off on a on a good good start. I, I also hear they have a uh, watermelon mint. Lemonade, which is, I think, a treat. I didn't get it. I actually, <laughs> I totally fell into the marketing trap. All right. So, so the picture of the sandwich at the Chick fil A at the drive through window was right next to a Dr. Pepper. So, guess what beverage I bought? Sprite. No, I bought the Dr. Pepper mm, because gotcha. I'm an absolute fool for marketing. So, that's true, Matt. If I had to list like qualities of Matt, that would definitely be in the top five. Um, now, I, and I don't mean, have you had Bojangles yet? I haven't had Bojangles. Oh, There's one right around the corner for me. There really is like one in very reasonable driving distance, and I haven't had it yet. I, I, you need to take the Bojangles challenge because Bojangles is better than Chick Fil A. I'm sorry. That's this is what happens when you have a Chick Fil A right. Like the Chick Fil A is four minutes away. No, Chick Fil A is more like six minutes away. The Bojangles is ten, so Chick Fil A just wins every time. Mm, I do like Chick Fil A. I do like me some, and the waffle fries and the lemonade and the. They're always so nice to you at the drive-through window. Um, oh, they have. They yeah, have to. closed on Sundays. Yeah, no Chick Fil A. Mhm. Yeah, Chick Fil A is the way. How how have they not made that there? slogan yet i don't know matt you should tweet that at them and see what they say <laughs> use this as your slogan <laughs> it'll be ten dollars mm. um you know matt talking about summer i had a topic i want to talk about okay fireworks is it summer oh fireworks fireworks okay which i associate with summer maybe they're not like the most associated but to, to me very much summer-esque um and matt I, I got to be honest, uh, fireworks are dumb, and uh, they're for children. And if you're an adult and you think fireworks are cool, uh, I'm going to judge you, like, hardcore. Where, where is this hostility coming I, you from? Know, I, I don't know. Have I ever indicated some kind of interest in fireworks? No, this is not directed at you. It's directed very... at the morons out there. Who, no, uh... <laughs> Are you listening? Is are people listening that you know that love fireworks? You know what it is. I I see Alex Jones is so popular on the internet. I figure if I just kind of ramble and shout like a crazy person, <laughs> I'm sure he loves fireworks. He seems like a guy who well, he shoots them off. I mean, he's, he's full of fireworks. Uh, no, I, yeah. I'm just I'm just I don't I don't get the appeal of fireworks. I get they why children up. like them, but I do not get why adults like them. They're they they're loud, stuff. and they're all the same. There's never any difference in any fireworks other than maybe quantity. Um, <laughs> they're very expensive um, and dangerous, and I just don't. I just don't see the. Maybe I'm just too practical. I don't know, Matt. Do you, are you a big fan of fireworks? I'm not. I wouldn't say I'm a big fan of fireworks. I I enjoy going to fireworks shows that are put on by professionals, and I don't think I would ever. I don't think I would ever take it into my own hands to put on a fireworks performance like I know a lot of people seem to want to do. But 
I I don't think I would judge anybody for for wanting to to blow, you know, blow up some tree stumps or whatever they do. Is that what you do to fight with fireworks? You tie them to trees or something? No, that no, that's dynamite. You're thinking of dynamite? Oh. No, fireworks you shoot, you know. I don't know. They, they gave us that. They explode. They gave us that that Katy Perry song. Oh, baby, you are a fireworks. Yeah. Um, now down here, they they sell fireworks. You can buy them in stores, and that's amazingly, that's the, yeah. See, uh, you can just you can just buy a bunch of fireworks. Oh my and, god! Did, uh, you, did you see that Walmart video from a while back, where a uh, Walmart was selling fireworks, and someone either by accident or on purpose lit one? And the entire display in this Walmart yes. was Caught just fire. going nuts with fireworks. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Fireworks are definitely very dangerous. I wouldn't recommend anybody who's not like trained or experienced or or anybody who's not sober probably shouldn't handle fireworks. Yeah, don't, don't try this one at home. I mean, you look at what happened to um, JPP. That's right. Giants. He, uh, That's right. He was kind of like fireworks. is mangled. Yeah, I forgot about now that. Now he has a mangled and now he's club. Done, and now he's a millionaire playing in the NFL. So, yep. you know, goes there to show. Go. It pays point to, A to point B. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't so, know. I, I'm just fireworks are, are. I think as as much a part of summer as you know, jumping in the pool and sipping lemonade. On your porch, I think all those things go with summer. I think I, when I think summer, I think uh, chilling out on the beach, and I think of cookouts, and I think of fireworks. So, Matt, I like girls that wear Abercrombie my... and Fitch. Well, I'd take you, her if I had one. I wish. would take her if I had one wish. But she's been gone since if I had that a second summer. Wish, it would be that Chick Fil A's barbecue chicken sandwich lasted all year. No, that it was not, not just exist over the no, summer. But that's why it's so good, Matt, because it's seasonal. It, that's why well, people get excited about the McRib. It's a really shitty sandwich. No, let's be honest. Nobody but gets excited about the McRib. People get excited. I don't. Nobody gets excited Shamrock about Shamrock Shake. Not anymore. Any of those seasonal fast food, mm -hmm. uh, BK chicken fries, you name it, man. They people. I don't think BK chicken fries are seasonal. I think they're here to stay. Unfortunately, when did that, that's a that's good news. When did that happen? <laughs> those are good. I think they decided that they were cheap enough and popular enough to just keep them around forever. Nice. Um, so, I don't know. I really like this sandwich. I can't say enough good things about it. Um, if you, if you, it, it really should become almost compulsory for by law that everybody should be able to taste this sandwich. It's, it's, it, was, it was so good. So good. But anyway, summer, uh, what's your favorite summer activity? Since obviously it's not fireworks. I know. Somebody, no. Fireworks hater over you. <laughs> um, well, the problem is I don't like going outside. So summer really isn't. I like, you know what I do really look forward to in the summer? And this was when you live somewhere where the weather's nice, something you can do all year round, but more fun in the summer. Um, eating outdoors. There is something about the appeal of eating outdoors for me. And I don't mean like, you know, in the middle of the woods, but I mean, <laughs> you know, at a restaurant with a, a porch or deck or eating in your backyard. Um, there's just something about that that's a really enjoyable experience. And prior to coming on with you, I was trying to think of why that is. And the first conclusion I came to is that Perhaps it's not that eating outside is great, because in many ways it's not, right? Too hot, bugs, there are lots of downsides. It's just that eating inside isn't great. Where usually, especially in a restaurant where it's usually either too cold or too hot, it's noisy, uh, it, there, there might be smells coming from the kitchen or something of that nature. Um, and I think eating outside is more of a, uh, of, of a refreshing experience. I don't know, Matt. Are, are you, are, do you enjoy eating outside? Sean, I do not enjoy oh, eating outside. Sean, I, I hate eating outside. <laughs> oh. it, I, I really do. It, I mean, obviously, I, I would eat outside if, you know, everybody, like all my friends and, and family were outside. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be the shut-in that would eat inside. But given the choice, 
I, I got to say, I, I, eating outside is not fun. It, especially the, the aspects you mentioned, bugs being my number one sure. concern with eating outside. I mean, think about that. You, you have this nice, beautiful bowl of mac and cheese. Okay. <laughs> it, it looks great. You know, you've been, you've been I got to be wanting honest. it all day, all afternoon. And right when you tuck your fork right into it, you have a bite. And it is it is just the best, well, most well cooked, well done mac and cheese. You got the breadcrumbs on the top that are nice and crispy. And and you're about to take that second bite, and a goddamn horse fly lands right in the middle of that mac and cheese and gets stuck in the cheese. And just in an instant, not only is that bowl ruined, but you don't want any more mac and cheese because you're disgusted. You know, Matt, I got to be honest. Ruined your whole afternoon. And now that that entire scenario could have been avoided had you just sat inside in a controlled environment with no insects. You would have gotten to enjoy that mac and cheese in peace. I could think of a hundred foods that are better to eat outside than macaroni and cheese. It's not really an outside food, but I understand. I understand. I I understand where you're coming from, and you want to be, you know, especially restaurants with kind of a a covered but still open eating space. And I, I agree with you, but I'm willing to. All right. How about we go with the best of both worlds? How about we say like a like a veranda, which I I'll be completely honest. So I I use that word not knowing full well what it means. <laughs> I think it means like a covering. Like I, I want to say it's like a an outdoor like where there's like a canopy almost above your head, so you're like kind of halfway indoors and halfway outdoors. I think that's what it means. That's what I've always thought it means. I've never looked it up. Oh, see, because- and, and the best part is Matt. I get to because I was watching the spelling bee a couple weeks ago, which we should do an episode on, um, because it's very interesting. But I get to play my spelling bee uh, word master here. Veranda noun. The definition, a roofed platform along the outside of a house, level with the ground floor. Used in a sentence, we'll have our coffee on the veranda. Its origins trace back to Portuguese, then Hindi, becoming English in the early 18th century. From now, Portuguese, what is the difference veranda a, meaning railing. What's the difference between a veranda and a porch then? Because they, they both sound the same to me. Um porch a construction usually external of the walls of the main building proper but may be enclosed with lattice work broad window screen or other light frame walls extending from the main structure i see that as um i don't know from the definition but i would say if you were asking me the sean definition i would say a porch is narrower and wraps a home where a veranda is more of a dedicated space that juts out from a home. Do you know what I'm saying? I do. So I would say a veranda is usually deeper away from your home. Okay. Well, let's choose one. And usually porch also a veranda, a porch usually has, uh, in my mind, a railing. Um, or okay. Some sort of I barrier think that, around that might it. be a big difference there. Which one would you rather have in your house, a porch or a veranda? Um... Why you got to choose Dream one. big, Matt. Why not both? You um, got to choose a veranda or I'm holding a... to it. I, I want a pergola. I think I want a pergola. I you made that word up. No, a pergola is a real. No, I think a pergola is a style of veranda, though. So I don't think okay. that. I want a deck. Francis Ford pergola. Francis Ford Was pergola. Right? I don't think that's right. <laughs> um, I would say. Gosh, I don't know. I would go ahead and, uh, yeah, I would go ahead and pick the deck. Veranda. The deck. Veranda? A patio. I want a patio. Come on. A veranda just sounds fancier. You you, you sound way more high class. Yeah. I mean, you know, no. let's go sit out on the porch. Or it's let's too go high gluten. It's too fancy. I, pa- I want a casual every man's patio. A patio is about as casual as it comes. Okay. Patio, the word patio makes me think of Patty Manny's from Doug. It doesn't make any sense. Patio, so. Spanish for patio i'm gonna go ahead and pick the veranda okay oh my god there's veranda magazine matt should we get you a subscription what is that they've got articles like 30 summer homes perfect for a weekend getaway and why 20, didn't that come 20 garden chairs that bring the party outside hmm. 
Pippa Middleton's wedding flowers were stunning, Matt. Is that also in the Veranda magazine? That's in Veranda magazine. I'm, I'm seriously. I'm gonna get you a subscription for your birthday. It's the least I could do. Sounds good. How much, do, how much do you think it costs to get a subscription to Veranda magazine? Well, assuming if you're subscribed to Veranda magazine, they probably assume that you own a Veranda, which means that you probably have money. So it's probably an expensive subscription, I or mean, more. I would say leaning on the expensive side. I'm blown away, Matt. You can get a one-year print subscription to Veranda Magazine for just ten dollars. That's really good. That's it. I'm, That's I'm, on the cheap side. All right, I'm gonna bookmark this and order that for you later. Um, Great. And by the way, we've got. Uh, I do want to quickly mention because I don't want people to think we're not paying attention. Um, we have up for debate super fan Michael Johnson watching the Whoa. Facebook stream. He's commenting here. First, uh, he says uh, on our on our discussion about the temporary nature of the Chick Fil A barbecue sandwich. He says, "Quote is something beautiful because it lasts. The beauty of life stems from its impermanence. The deepest sentiment of the human experience applied to a chicken sandwich." He said, "Very deep." Um, and then on you not knowing the definition of veranda, he says, the audience appreciates Matt's humble honesty. <laughs> Mike Johnson, you are quite the everyman, aren't you? Speaking on behalf of our whole audience. Even well, he he is our whole audience, Probably Matt. So, audience, yeah, so. that's, I think, I, actually fair. I always like to, I like to use Mike Johnson as kind of a, a uh, thermometer to, to take our, our audience's temperature because – He's our audience. Uh, Matt, didn't uh, didn't you tell me he emailed us in with a question? Did about, I say that? About uh, barbecuing or something like that? Barbecue. I swear you... All right, don't... I, I, <laughs> I, I, I swear you told me that he had a question about barbecue etiquette that he well, that he wanted us to talk oh, about on the show. Yes, he did. That was and a now topic the perfect that time he for that. thought would be a great episode. Now, yeah, I do think this is a good time to get into that, so... All right. Uh, he wanted to know specifically, um, and I'm sure our other audience members, of course, would like to know um, more about uh, what is the proper etiquette if you get invited to a barbecue. Um, do you, you know? Do you bring? What do you bring with you? Do you have to? Or should you feel obligated to bring something with you? If you don't bring anything with you. You know, are you going to be considered rude? Mm. Um, you know, do you help clean up after the barbecue is over? Or do you, you know, just let the host do it? Mm. Um, so, all right. I think that's a... Very relevant you know, to our summer discussion. discussion. So, yeah. Um, I think that you could, you could probably bring... You could bring... I like to bring quick and easy things but essential things i think essential is the is the operative word there if you show up at a barbecue with a centerpiece you know Wait, it's probably not the best you, thing to you bring, to bring like a, a swan ice sculpture or something good, it's not it's not very necessary mm. it's not very utilitarian i would be more inclined to bring you know some cold beverages such as mike's hard lemonade mm. or not your father's root beer. Mm. Not your father's root beer. You can buy it in stores now. It's about $9.99. It's not very good. Uh, for a uh, six-pack. I think it's very good. Um, that'll, that's, just, that's just like your opinion. So, um, <laughs> That's how opinions work. I recommend the hard, the hard root beer, though. Don't venture outside the root beer. The rest of the stuff, I think they, they just make it so they can – say, oh, look, we, we don't just make root beer. We also make nasty cream soda and nasty grape soda. Just buy the root beer. You don't really need anything else. Um, all right, so that's not your father's root beer in stores now. you got to stop advertising for our non-existent advertisers. Oh, I guess it's, 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 it's good enough. They'll just give send us you money. free stuff. I think that's how it works. A crate yeah. of that will just show up at your house. Um, you know, Matt, it, it, two things. One, this is going to be fun because you and I are going to have very different opinions on most of this subject. And B, I spend an unnecessary amount of time thinking about these things because it really I, – I, I get very anxious when I'm the awkward guy who does the wrong thing. So I spend a lot of time thinking about this. Here's Michael Johnson. Let me answer your question. This is what you do. Reach out to the host prior to the party. 
Depends on how good of a friend you are with the host, right? If it's if it's a close friend or someone you know well, reach out ahead of time and ask them what you can bring. And usually, if it's a good enough friend, they will tell you. Don't offer to bring, like, you know, something crazy or big. Just say, look, you need, like, plates or knives or a beverage. You want me to bring beer? Ask first. Don't assume. However, if you don't know the person well, I like to bring a small gift of appreciation for having me over. Usually a small plant is a great gift because it's unexpected and it's it can never be wrong because it's not like you brought beer when they had a ton of beer or you brought, you know, peanuts and someone's allergic to peanut. It, it can never be wrong because it's just a, it's a token of appreciation more so than contributing to the party. Let me make it clear. If you're going to a party and you don't know the person running the party that well, you should not be expected to bring any kind of party-related item because you are not a primary guest. You're a secondary guest. Whoa. <laughs> so there you go. There's your answer. Problem solved. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to go ahead and disagree. I'm all right. I'm I'm gonna agree to disagree. Uh, so I, I I partially agree with the the you know bringing a gift, a token of appreciation. I think that will not go unnoticed. I think that will that's always welcome. However, I think you gotta back that gift up with something utilitarian. Utilitarian gifts are very important. How utilitarian is a plant? But that's the I mean, point. What it's are you going to do with that plant? What is the practicality of that plant? But here's yeah, the I, here's... I would back it up. You got to bring something like napkins or no. something. Like you never have too many napkins. No, but here's I'm... the thing, though, Matt. If you're a, again primary or secondary guest, right? Inner mm -hmm. circle of friends, outer circle of friends, right? And we all know this happens at every party. If you're in the inner circle, yeah, you got to bring something useful. But you should have already contacted the, the 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 person throwing the party ahead of time because you're in the inner circle and you know them well enough. But if you're in the outside circle. No, you should not be expected to bring something practical to the party because the inner circle should have handled it. All right, here we go. This is what I would do. I would, if I'm in the outer circle, I'm bringing, I'm going to make something. I'm going to cook some, I'm going to prepare something ahead of time no. that will blow people away at the Absolutely party. Not. And that way I will work my way into the inner circle. This no. is where I am. I'm outside the circle. If I cook something that is like just amazing and people eat it and then it makes them cry, it's so good. I'm in the inner circle now. Look at that. Oh, yeah. we got to invite Matt back to our parties. Yeah, he, Matt. He makes, the best, nope. he makes the best quiche I've ever no. eaten. Here's the problem, It's Matt. great. Rewind and the tape. Quiche is very unassuming. It's not Who like you – quiche to a summer party? You haven't, you haven't gone and prepared like ribs or something like, oh like hearty God. that will take away – it won't detract from the main dish, but a nice little quiche, and it has to be good. It has to be great. It can't be anything other than spectacular, because otherwise you're not going to get into that inner circle. You're going to be on the outside forever. So if you want to get into that inner circle, quiche. Okay. And alcohol, but also a great quiche. All right, two things. One, if you show up to a pool party with quiche, I'm going to just leave it at that. Two, um, <laughs> the problem with that, Matt, is then you end up with eight people who all brought quiche because there was no planning or coordination. And then you look like a jerk because you're the eighth person to show up with quiche. And you're like, oh, put it with the other quiches. Well, and look, then, you just said it yourself. Who else is going to bring, bring quiche? Well, but then you're the weird guy who brought the who brought the quiche. <laughs> I mean, if you want to be known as that guy. No, but he's not going to be the weird guy if the quiche is phenomenal at least if, if it's mind-blowing but at least if you're the weird guy who brought the plant then he's, the, like, he's the artist no. he's the artist who no, brought no, the quiche no, no, no. the no, no, artist no. who cooked the best damn quiche i've ever had nope. the artist who is now in the inner circle i don't think so i don't i don't i don't think so you don't you, you don't have to be the artist it's better to be the guy i would rather be a guy who brought nothing than the guy who brought the weird thing <laughs> that's just my standing is you don't want to be the odd man out so play it safe and bring beer or nothing. And even well, I then, think we can even... agree. Bringing nothing is not the answer. That's no, never going to get. Sometimes it is. Answer. No, I don't think that. No, 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 no. I don't look. If a friend of a friend invited you to a party and you don't know the person throwing it that well, no, you don't have to bring anything. I think the only time bringing absolutely nothing is acceptable is if you were invited very impromptu. By a friend of a friend, and it was like, 
a, a spur of the moment. It was like, oh, I got this invite this morning, and like, no, no, like, uh, they don't expect me to bring anything, so I'll just bring myself. But that's, but then again, that's if you're invited early enough and they're like legit invitations, you ask. You always ask. Yeah. It's always yeah. good to ask. And then if they say it. no and you don't bring anything, then you don't feel guilty because you can say you ask. You got to say, do you need any sides? That's the key word, sides. That way, you, if they say, well, yeah, we always want sides, then it's it's okay to bring a no. quiche. It's not weird. It's not Again. strange bring a quiche it's well, it's, it's normal it's that's always, a good that's a good side unless you're going to a quiche party it's weird to bring a quiche but i will say quiche parties but that's what i'm saying that's why it's weird um but i will say that a side is actually in my opinion one of the last things you should offer because usually that's the most work and the most at risk of people not liking it you ask about beverages because those are you just pick up a six pack and you're fine or um uh, uh, houseware items, uh, napkins, plates, cups, forks, whatever, yeah. tablecloths, all that kind of stuff is easy to buy, easy to store. You can buy it in advance, easy to transport, and then you're the hero because everyone needs it. So I think <laughs> I think that's kind of a safe way to go. Is one of those way. If you're fe- if you feel really good about a recipe, if you do make a really good quiche, then offer to bring. Hey, look, I'm known for my quiche. Want me to bring the quiche? Matt and the quiche, that's what they call us. We're, we're a tandem <laughs> pair. Then yes, I would say offer to bring the quiche. But no, I wouldn't I wouldn't jump right into right into offering to bring a side unless you're really confident. Yeah. Now, another thing to remember, if you are a guest at a summer barbecue, it is not a big deal if you forget your Tupperware. Do not bother the guests or the host about your missing tub. Don't be like, well. I lent my Tupperware to Sean, and now I, I want it back like the next day. It's okay if you if you let them keep your Tupperware for as long as possible. Rewind the tape. If you brought your food in Tupperware you were expecting back, you made a big mistake. There is disposable Tupperware and plenty that's, that's of ways cool. in the, in the fo- get the foil, you know, those foil pans. And just, yeah. again, you want to make it as easy as possible on the person throwing the party. If you're expecting them to wash and return your Tupperware, forget about it. Just um, treat it as a gift that you have given and you're your not getting it back. people. Yeah, that you've given the host. Now, the big problem I have at the end of parties is what you do with leftovers. Because usually you don't want it, and usually the host doesn't want it. No, I, I always want leftovers. Okay, because sometimes, and then I feel I I always get into the. There's always that one. There's also always that one. There's that one person that goes to the party that will eat all the leftovers and or and or take them home. So I, I'm never worried about. Maybe it's that. just because I'm a young guy. Everyone always tries to force the leftovers on me. Oh, Sean, take it home. You can make a lunch <laughs> tomorrow. And I'm like, no, I don't want your party's leftovers. You can keep them. No, that's great. Then you don't have to think about it for the next day. You can maybe even the next two days. You can just eat party leftovers. So much quiche, man! I can't eat all of that. Um, um, now, now the other thing too, bonus here. This 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 is next level advanced stuff. So pay attention, right? If you if you're a close friend with the person throwing a party, I don't think you necessarily have to do this. You can just do this more casually. If you're not, send a thank you note. Yes. Very few people do it. You will be remembered. You will be appreciated. That's how you get in the inner circle. Are huge. Yes. Send the inner circle note. of kindness. It takes two minutes. Doesn't have to just, just thanks for having me at your party. I had a great time. See you at the next party. Yes. And then send it. And they will remember that. They will think Boom. fondly. Because no one does Thank that. You. No one does that. So you will blow them away. That's, that's the best way to handle it. And you'll definitely be on the list for next year. And remember, we talked about things to bring to a party. The one thing that you should never, ever bring to a party is a bad attitude. Don't bring your bad attitude to a party, unless that's the name of the beer that you're bringing. Well, is there a beer called Bad Attitude? I'm sure there is. <laughs> there is it doesn't a, sound like a good name for a I'm beer. I'm so sure that there has to be, yeah. So um, don't bring your bad attitude to a party. It's a gathering of friends and um you know, you, you'll be remembered in a bad way if you bring your bad attitude. That's not a good way to get in the circle. If you want to get in the circle, it's with things like thank the, you notes. The inner, the inner and the outer and, circle. And quiche. See, so. now, now but, but what about – I have a I have a big problem at 
uh, events, you and I have a mutual friend who's uh, famous for this, um, inviting their friends to your party when you did not want them to bring an extra guest. Um, and let me just state for the record, uh, unless the event is so open that it's a block party and anyone can show up, ask the host permission before you bring somebody. P- yeah, clear it that's always first. a good idea. Best way to yes. handle it. Absolutely. Um, and I think that about covers it for, for, um, Okay, how about this scenario? You're at your barbecue. Okay, your cookout with your buddies. Now, you're not in the inner circle. You're a little bit outside the inner circle. All of a sudden, the party gets interrupted by bees. (laughs) A lot of bees. You're eating a lot of sweet things and drinking a lot of sweet things. The bees get attracted to these things. Now, you don't have to run for cover because not only are there bees, but it's also starting to rain. It's a summer storm. Mm. The perfect storm, they might say, because there are bees there are also involved. bees, yes. A storm of bees, yes. The only place you can find shelter from both the storm and the bees is a shed that fits about five people. Okay. You can do you do you run for the shed immediately, or do you sacrifice your space in the shed for the host and or one of the members of the inner circle? First of all, this is the best choose your own adventure I've ever done. So thank you for that. <laughs> Two, um uh the actual correct answer is you grab a snorkel and you get in the pool. Um yes. and the bees can't get okay. you. Problem um, solved. And three, assuming the shed scenario, um, you know, Matt, I, I, I really say in the hypothetical, that's a very tough one to answer because I'd like to say women and children first. I don't really care about the hosts necessarily. I care about the more vulnerable at the party. Um, if it's more, if there are families there, then yeah, you probably want to let women and children in. Um, if it's, if it's your bros, um, then no, it's first come first serve and the host can go into their own house and suck it. Um, but I don't, I don't really think there are any winners in that, in that situation. Yeah. I think the real answer is why would everybody be hiding in a shed when, you know, you could just go into the house. Probably. They're probably cars. There are probably a lot of places you can hide from the bee. Plus why would I'm a, I don't know if bees don't like rain or anything, but if it's raining really hard, I would think the bees probably would just go away. I don't know. Can do bees swarm in heavy rainstorms? I don't know. Sometimes. I've seen it happen. Have you? No. Okay. <laughs> I don't really know where they go when it rains. I guess they go in their hive. They must not like the rain. I, I haven't seen too many bees out when it rains, as a matter yeah. of fact. I would think the, the raindrops would really slow them down. Um, but good scenario, Matt. I'm glad. Keep thinking. We got to plan ahead for these things. Bees and honey all summer. Mm-hmm. For sure. Mm-hmm. Um. I don't know about you, but down here we get copperheads, those poisonous snakes. They come out during the summer. Yes. Uh, I, did, I didn't learn that was a thing until about a week ago. Uh, I saw a river snake. Apparently, apparently there are river snakes down here in Virginia. I saw one swimming at a local park. It was might have been the thir- second or third most terrifying thing I've seen. They're very majestic but terrifying. They're very poisonous as well. They're actually they're up there in like the top ten poisonous snakes of the U.S. So um, snakes are also a, a, a part of summer. Snakes are Horrible. awesome. Snakes are so cool. I don't want one as a pet, nor do I particularly want to touch a wild one. But I think they're awesome. They are interesting. Uh, you probably don't want to bring a snake to a barbecue. I mean, that actually, that might be, that's kind of like a wild card because it could be, you could be, you'll be remembered for sure. You're the snake guy though. I snake. Yeah. You'll be the snake guy. Um, but you really got to play that one close to the vest. I don't know if that can turn out horrible or good. I guess it all depends on the behavior well, of the snake. If it's like if the a snake bring a good attitude. If you're going to a party of circus performers, that might be an appropriate thing to do. If you're going to a quinceanera, might be an inappropriate thing to do. (laughs) So again, you want to judge judge the situation, right? Use context clues 
to alert you to the appropriate actions you should take while you're there. Yeah. I just keep thinking of the snake people that stole all of my money in D&D. &D. Oh, so the wand I har I harbor, Yes, I harbor a little bit of bitterness towards the snakes, as you oh, can they understand. Were, they were the best. Yeah. They were great. Yes, Matt. Stole all your monies. That voice will be in my nightmares tonight. One, one, one of the two good voices I've ever done on that. Um, <laughs> no, man, I do, I do want to take a second though and talk about summer beverages. Because yeah. summer is the season for beverages. Maybe and we can have this discussion. It may be the best season for beverages. Mm -hmm. And what is your best summer beverage? I've really gotten into drinking uh, recently. Leinenkugel. Uh, it's, a, it's a summer shandy. Lion Kugel, by the way, fantastic beverage. It's available at your local supermarkets. Uh, Lion Kugel, Wisconsin's finest. So, are they even from Wisconsin, or did you make that up? Oh yeah, no, they are. No, They're they from are. Wisconsin. They're from some in, in unpronounceable place in Wisconsin, but Matt, they're great. They, someday, I'm gonna get an invitation from you. Come to Matt's summer cookout party, and it'll just be uh, not your father's root beer, Lion and Kugel summer shandy, yeah. and quiche. And I'm not coming. I'm that declining like hard. Summer made in heaven. Oh, God. Uh, let's also talk about corn on the cob. I know it's not a beverage, but how great is that as a summer snack? I hate corn on the cob. That's impossible. There, that is impo you can't hate corn so, on the cob. So let me be it's, clear. Hang on. Let me explain it's myself. It's tasty. There's can, nothing bad about it. Cut me some slack. Okay. So, Matt, would, would it be fair to say I have many quirks? Yes. Okay. That I am a particular Works. person. And a, a couple of um, I'm an odd screws ball. loose as well. Yes. A couple of, <laughs> a, a couple of uh, not the brightest bulb in the bunch. No. Uh, I would, um, I, I have a quirk. I don't like eating messy or saucy foods with my hands. It's just a pet peeve. Any anything that is particularly uh, 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 dirtying of your hands while eating it is something I don't like to eat. This includes corn on the cob and ribs I do, or wings. I don't eat wings. Oh, man. This is depressing. Any food you have to eat with your hands, that's, I will not eat. So, sorry. I like corn. Well, look. Have you ever seen those holders? You stick the holders in the side of the corn yeah, of the cob. I don't have to touch it. I don't like corn on the cob that much to go through I mean, the effort of that. And then, and then you're know. the one guy with the holders like you're some kind of dainty princess. So <laughs> I just, Has this happened to you before? No, the, the kids laughed at me. <laughs> no, no, this hasn't happened before. But I just choose not to uh, to do corn. But I do like, look, hey, corn on – and I lived uh, – you know, up up north here in corn country, you know, you get it fresh from the uh, fresh from the fields. It it doesn't get much better. Your sweet corn, your baby, your uh, baby sweet corn, very good. King corn. Yeah, I don't know. It, it's just it's one of those summer things. I think just one of those summer things. Um. Yeah. So what 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 is your uh, summer beverage of choice? You know. I've really gotten a lemonade is probably number one, but I've also really gotten to the Arnold Palmer, the 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 lemonade iced tea because I I don't like iced tea enough on its own to drink it a lot, but with lemonade, man. Well, here's the thing: I don't like lemonade enough on its own to drink, so it's the best of both worlds. Thank you, it professional is. golfer it Arnold is. Palmer. May he rest in peace. May, yes, sir. You he bet. Died about a month ago. Mm. Um. Yeah, but he did invent one tasty drink. He did. Um, I really like... What's the other summer beverage that's Capri great? Capri Sun. Oh, yes. Capri Sun. That wasn't even what I was going to say. No. I was going to say the straw burrita. Fantastic. Oh, get, come on. Stop that. Yes. No. The straw burrita and the lime burrita. Anything oh, the arita, the cran arita, and the great. the great and the watermelon arita, so the great arita, almost dangerously great, but very good. Um, Capri Sun, can I ask you this? Have you ever drank Capri Sun from a glass? You know, I 
before you asked, I was literally just thinking that. And no, I haven't. But now I kind of want to. Either, but I really want to. Yeah. I bet it's extremely unremarkable. I I don't even know what it looks like. Could you imagine the Pepsi challenge, but with Capri Sun, where someone just hands you a glass and you say, "Drink this," and I bet it, (laughs) and and then they hand you a Capri Sun in a pouch and they say, "Drink this." I bet, and, and it's the same. But I bet you think the pouch tastes better. Or if they if they just hand you a glass of Capri Sun and you have to tell them what beverage it is, and it's it's that one that everybody drank, the flavor that everybody drank, Surfer Cool or whatever it was called. <laughs> yeah, that's the, the one that everybody. That was the the best flavor. I'm convinced that was the only flavor that they ever made. It's but mattered. Yeah, Surfer Cool. I think it was something like that. I I guarantee if you just drink it out of a glass, you, you won't even know. You'll be like, what is this? Oh, you're thinking of uh, the cool, the coastal coolers there? Oh, surfer cooler? Yeah, surfer cooler. <laughs> yep. And then remember when uh, they had the uh, the Kool Aid jammers, which were trying to rip on Capri Sun? And oh yeah. It's never. The Everybody same. knew it though. Everybody knew it. Nope. You know what though? The Kool Aid jammers. Now that was that was in the like closed plastic bottles. No, you're thinking of no. The jammers were in the pouch. So you're thinking of the uh, oh. The Kool Aid and the yeah, what was it? Um, I thought those were the jammers, the plastic bottles. Mm. Those those had a novelty to them. They did. They had a novelty to them. They're still around. Oh, you're thinking actually. of Cool Bursts. Cool Bursts. Yes, Kool Aid Bursts. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I'm thinking of jammers, okay. which were in the pouches. Yeah. Oh, cool jammers. Cool Bursts was a straight rip off. The Cool Bursts you can still get, and they're terrible. Have you had one recently? They're much not better very, as a kid. The last time I had one was in college. And they, they are not what they are definitely not what I remember, sadly. But I do think there's a there's a special nostalgia for it. Oh sure. Well it's like Especially the, uh, because they're dirt cheap. They're did like you, Did you ever have the um the fruit jugs? Yeah. With the little yeah, foil had, tops and you'd mm-hmm. you'd peel them off and they'd be the and the, uh, those are not good. Go buy those now. I did that yeah. a couple years ago. Steak. Yeah, I can't believe my parents you know has that. still stood the test of time. One of the greatest summer snacks that I can remember. Oh boy. Flintstone ice pops. Have you ever had a Flintstone ice pop? I don't Not that I can that recall. Is still a fantastic summer treat. Oh, the push-up pops? Still buy them. The push-up yes, pops. Push pops. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, 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 I'm yeah. pretty sure the Flintstones marketed the hell out of them, right? No, they were well, like they the marketed main... the hell out of a lot of things, to be fair. Here, vitamins, I'll... stone vitamins, fruity pebbles. I'll put some pictures of this up on the screen so people can uh, Oh man, can see what I'm talking about. Yeah, those push pops are great. They still are just... Ugh. Now, what about... And I the agree. The ice cream truck. Yeah, I never did the ice cream truck as a kid. No? But I kind of lived in a rural, rural area where the ice cream truck didn't... People made their own ice cream. Well, the houses weren't. <laughs> they milked the cow, that, and then they made mar, the mar and par. Yes, no, no, no. It's just the houses were too far apart, so they the truck never okay. it never made sense. I remember the ice cream truck. I I I don't know. I I was a very very wishy washy when it came to the ice cream truck. I I did not have everybody like was always like, oh, I always got the SpongeBob ice pop, or I always got the creamsicle, but I feel like I got a different thing every time. I, I really was trying to make the most of the ice cream experience, and I did that by like just just shopping trying, around, basically. Trying new things. Well, no, you should. I the one thing I never got, and I don't really regret it. I never got the choco taco. Mm, overrated. I think that was yeah. It seemed very overrated. Overrated. That that's a nostalgia. Like, I think people remember that being better than it was. The chip witch just bl- would just blow the hell. Oh out my of god, that. chip witch was the shit. Chip witch is still the shit. <laughs> yes, chip witch is great. Chip witch. Cookies and ice cream. Oh, it's a winner. You can't go wrong. You just can't. I ate a lot, and maybe just because they were a little simpler. But I was like the the tubes of the the flavored water that would just get icy. Mm-hmm. And you did you? Just, yeah, you just those were simple. Like it's, it's the simplest ice. It's literally but just ice. Fantastic. Yeah, can't go wrong. Mm. Everybody would fight over the green one. I think everybody liked was the green the, one the best. One? Green was super popular. Orange was pretty popular too. Nobody wanted the purple. If you got the purple, you were you were mocked. 
Matt kicked your ass. Um, <laughs> the purple was gross, though. In, 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 you know, in my defense, it was. It, it tasted like medicine. Which you never want wrong. Purple. Yeah. Now, I will oh, say... Blue. Everybody wanted the blue. Oh, the that blue? Was yeah, blue was hot. Yeah. Blue was hot. Um, I will say, if you're looking today for an ice cream treat, Matt, I just tried these. And I will give it the I'll, I'll give it the commercial treatment like you've given many products this evening. If you're looking for a cool treat on a hot summer's day, I recommend visiting your grocer's freezer and picking up new Ben and Jerry's. Um, crap! What the, what the hell are they called? The, new Ben and Jerry's crap! What the hell are they? Called? <laughs> That's the first name they pitched, and um, and it didn't go well. Um, Crap, what the hell are they called? Crap, what the hell are they Who's called? Out? New from Ben and Jerry's. In your freezer section. <laughs> oh, God. No, um, it is their new... Um, crap, it's like, a, it's like a hockey puck of ice cream. Have you seen these? Klondike bar? Yes, they're rip-off of a Klondike bar. But it's Ben and Jerry's rendition of Klondike yes, bars. Yes, exactly. Okay. And, and, but it's Ben and Jerry's ice cream, and it's in their flavors. Like, I like the America, Stephen Colbert's Americone Dream is my personal favorite. I, like, yeah, I like that pint. too. So they have that, but then they cover it in chocolate. But, like, Klondike bars have really shitty chocolate. Like, I don't know if you've had a Klondike bar recently. It's, it's crap chocolate. Ben and Jerry's high-quality dark chocolate, excellent chocolate with cool ice cream in a nice hockey puck-sized bite they're round not rectangular individually packaged now available at retailers nationwide check it out okay that, that is my work i've been eating those and those are they're, and tasty uh but klondike bars yeah i don't know i go back and forth on those i forgot about those yeah uh yeah i can't remember if i've ever gone out of my way to buy klondike bars again chip witch chip chip witch chip bars great superior. Um, but Flintstones ice pops are great if you if you get the chance. Do they still they're, make those? Cream, they do. They do. They're kind of hard to find. Um, I don't. I feel like they don't really ship them very hard. But they're in select grocery stores. If you if you can, pick them up. Flintstones push pops. Tell your friends. Um... Yeah. Gosh, yeah, summer. Jeez. Well. Any any lasting thoughts on summer, man, as we uh, run out of time here? Well, you know me, Sean, and you know that I, I like girls that wear Abercrombie and Fitch. And I would take them if I had one wish. But if I had another wish, it would have to be that... Uh, I mean, I think it's fly when girls stop by for the summer, for the, for the summer, summer, but it's even more fly if they come with a nice quiche. All right. And it, it's yeah. also got a, the quiche is good, but even better is that barbecue Chick-fil-A summer edition in stores now. Get it while it's hot. Get it before it's gone. Chick-fil-A summer barbecue bacon sandwich i think that's what it's called it has a very complicated name they should just call it chick-fil-a summer sandwich it's good you know what it's... matt when you take a sip you buzz like a hornet billy shakespeare wrote a whole bunch of sonnets are you just reading the lyrics to lfo i didn't have to read that matt i right just now? knew that what can i you're the best girl that i ever did see, ever did the, see. Great the great larry bird, larry bird jersey, jersey 33 Wow. He just said things. Peak of American That's music right there. Never been better. Never will. <laughs> That's it. Doesn't get any better than LFO. Um, cool. Well, no, hey, look, I think this was a lot of fun. But Matt, I'll tell the folks out there, uh, if if you have if we blew it, if we totally missed the boat on this episode, you gotta let us know. You gotta correct the record. Reach out. Up for debate TV at gmail.com is the email, or you can tweet at us at up for debate TV or leave a voicemail. 508-644-8324 is the phone number, uh, and we'll carry it over into next week if we get any thoughts in from you folks. At that, Matt, we also got to let the folks at home know this new thing we're doing. Yeah, this I'm, new I'm, thing. I'm, I'm, we're doing. Um, you know, a lot of people may not know this. Up for Debate is part of the Coffee and Beer family of podcasts. 
Did you know that, Matt? I did know that. You did know that. I, and we have what are known as I don't know if our fans knew that at home though. But that's great. They know that now because we have our sis, what I call our sister shows, Game Nights and Don't Panic, and we've d- discussed those on the sh- on this show before. We've had Colby and Dan on um, this program before as well. And so I would tell all the folks out there that we're doing this new thing called Coffee and Beer Radio, where we do these daily updates from those three shows um, every single day, five minutes or less. They're very short clips, but I think they're very enjoyable. Just the highlights and some original content you won't hear anywhere else. If you like what we do here, you'll like that as well. And you can get it in uh, two major places. One, we're in the new Anchor app at anchor.fm, and we have a station in there. Anchor is a fantastic app. Uh, I recommend you download it, check it out, and subscribe to our channel there. Or you can get it in podcast form on on, uh, Apple Podcasts and um, Stitcher Radio and Google Play Music and all the places you normally get podcasts. Just search Coffee and Beer Radio. Now, that being said, if you want more of this program, you go to our website, which is upfordebate.tv. All the episodes are there, past, present, and future, the audio and the video. And you can also click subscribe to get links to everywhere you can get the show, including on SoundCloud and, I, and Apple Podcasts and Google Play Music and all those places. Of course, the video version on I, on uh, YouTube. And, of course, you can uh, check out the Facebook page at facebook.com slash TV. We're live Thursday nights, uh, but you got to like the page to get notified when we go live. And we hope you can join us then, like Michael Johnson and all the other folks who give us feedback during the show. Matt, anything else you would like to say before we r- 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 wrap it up? R- 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 um... Macaulay, all right. Oh. <laughs> Stayed all summer, then went back home. Macaulay Culkin was, wasn't was home alone. Uh, fell deep in love, but now we ain't speaking. Michael J. Jay Fox, Fox was, was Alex, Alex P. P. Keaton. Yeah. When I met you, I said my name was Rich. You look like a girl from Abercrombie and Fitch. That is easily That's all I have to say about that. That is easily the eighteenth best song with summer in the title. Yeah. There are so many better oh. ones. I think he, he even he says something about Paul Revere. <laughs> ba- I, I know uh, he rhymes it with baby when you're near. Yes, he does. Oh Where God. is it? How did I know that? I, I'm looking at the lyrics right now. What, this is this is really it's a great song. Yeah, there was a good man named Paul Revere. I feel much better, baby, when you're, when you're near. near. You love fun dip and cherry <laughs> coke. Like I like the, the way, way you laugh, laugh when you tell a I joke. Tell, I tell a joke. Um. Oh God, that song. Yeah. So. Boys of summer, cruel summer. Summertime. There are so many better songs. No, there really, there really aren't. There really aren't. That is the summer song. Um, but yeah, uh, I think we'll have to continue this next time. Maybe we'll talk summer part two because I, I do think there is a lot left to cover. We got to talk about swimming pools mm. and uh, movie stars. You never, you never seen the Beverly Hillbillies? No, I know, so, I know, but I was actually thinking we could talk about summer blockbusters because that is a blockbuster. Thing. Oh, blockbuster was a thing back in the summer. Well, and uh, then the other nineties too. I, I'm very nostalgic for blockbuster. Ever since you used the word blockbuster in our pre-show discussion, I've been very nostalgic. Just getting a Capri Sun and walking over to blockbuster with my Walkman I and my game. I don't think this happened. I think you're just making stuff up. I'm just naming things Back from the, during the, the depression. Thing. Yeah. Walk over Except in my bell bottom jeans to the discotheque. Was... Yeah. We do need to do so, an episode on I, I do have on my list of potential topics defunct things like Blockbuster. Yeah. All right. But well, have to talk about that. But anyway, we've got to wrap up this episode before we can get to next the next time. one. So on up. 
for the bait. Is that the spooky ending? Uh, no, hey, th- uh, on behalf of Matt, this is Sean. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. We always appreciate it. Uh, and we will be back next time with even more great discussion here on Up for Abercrombie and Fitch. All right, no, Matt. The, are, is that still a thing? I don't know. I don't know. You don't know. Well, I don't know what it means when you when you ask when you tell a girl that she looks like a girl from Abercrombie and Fitch. Are you telling her she looks like a model, or are you telling her she looks like a girl that you know that works at Abercrombie and Fitch? I like girl. Well, I, it says I like girls that wear like Abercrombie girls and Fitch. That wear okay. So, so, so really, is it like a status thing? Because those clothes aren't you know they're not like they're not. I think you're just talking about the type of people that wear Abercrombie and Fitch. I do not like those kinds of people. You're just kind of letting her know ahead of time. I like girls that wear Abercrombie and Fitch, so if you don't, then I'm not interested. Man, could you imagine the dating profile for that guy? <laughs> I like girls that wear Abercrombie and Fitch. Hmm. Yeah. Single forever. All right. Goodbye. <laughs> That's, no, I don't know. You, I, I, we're not very good at it. Thanks for joining us. Oh, are we this still is, on? This is the end. What? Yes. Oh, we ended a while ago. When no. I said Abercrombie and Fitch. No, because you I was gonna end it and you said Abercrombie and Fitch. So we're still going. Well, Matt, why don't you say goodbye so I know that we're officially done? Okay. You um, sign us off. We we've I've done eighty of them. This is eighty one. You get your chance. <laughs> I don't know. This is a lot of pressure. I, I don't know if I'm ready for uh I believe in you. Okay. Summertime girls are the kind I like. I'll steal your honey like I stole your bike. <laughs>